I spoke to a lot of people in prison and uh, I realised this very quickly that a lot of people were getting shot on eyeballs. So if, you, so if you were being ready-eyed on a bit of work, and so the minute you turned up, you're going to get shot. Uh, if you take a gun to a, a work, uh, you're going to get shot. Um, and you're also going to get 25 years. So it was about thinking of a new way to earn money. And I can always remember sitting in prison watching the Ocean's Eleven style heists. And I thought, well, that'd be great if I got out and got a little team together, got some police uniforms, a dog, you know, and actually just go into places with warrants and actually do it right. Uh, so I came out. Um, I got involved in a, in, a, in a few things to raise some capital. And then I got some vans, some cars, some ID, some uniforms. And then we went to work. You know, I got, you know, one of my friends, uh, he's six foot four, one of my other pals, ex army. Uh, another of my, my, you know, my other couple of pals, they're, they're like bulldogs, they're, they're like, you know, they're there. They're our core guys that I can trust. I've known them all my life. Um, so we went and started just, you know, we put our toes in and, and nicked, you know, cut on the ground there. Cut on the ground now. I thought, oh, fucking, this is good. And then we started doing, doing warehouses, bonded and that. And then uh, we, uh, we, we uh, came across the Verizon uh, Communication Centre in King's Cross. Uh, we were told, we were told by a lot of firms it was a high risk job and it was probably one that shouldn't be, shouldn't be approached simply because there was a police station at Ivory Islet and now, there was Kennish Town Police Station at the other end and uh, there was uh, Al 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 Albany Street on the other side and behind it there was, there was a canal so there's no way out, there's only one way in and one way out. And it was a rack round for the old bill as well. You know, they were coming past every five minutes. Um, so it was deemed, you know, un, you know, it was one of those jobs you can't do. So did that entice you in even more? That tease you even more that someone says a job couldn't be done? So you've kind of got that, fuck it, I'll show them. Do you know what? I think because I was so angry. Because, I, you know, I, had, I still had a lot of resentment for the old bill. Mm -hmm. You know, one for nicking me. I don't know why. It just is. Um, I actually went out of my way to actually... Because I nicked, I nicked uh, the, I, I nicked everything off the old bill, out the vans and everything. We went, you know, we got everything. I also done an, a, an ID with, with Darren Brand. That was my thing. You know, the illusionist. Yeah. So I got every, all the ID done, and then going down there and 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 reading because I read the sites. You know, it's one of the places. It was like Fort Knox, twenty four hour security, eight security guards, uh, biometric alarm systems, uh, keypads, everything. It had everything. It was, it was in you know air pressure doors, the works. And we thought, how can we do this? And we, 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 we come up with just uh, a different way that most people were doing things at that time. We went and got ourselves an old station. We bought a couple of vans, a couple of, uh, couple of cars. We, we kicked them out. And, and we got the uniforms and we went down there. You know, we had a look at it for a few days in, uh, over, that, over that period. And we realised that the only flaw in the whole system was the fact that they were still open that door when people knocked on it. And that was a weak thing. So we went down there. Pulled up on, on the, as we walked, believe it or not, when we pulled down here the first time, there was a cop car came behind us, a real old Bill. We was all dressed as old Bill. And next thing we looked in, looked in the wing mirror and, the, and there's a real old Bill behind us. And all of a sudden the, the lights went on. And I, I, I always remember that feeling. I looked at my pal and I, I felt my stomach go over. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, fuck, we got to do this. Cunt. Otherwise you're not going to be able to get out of here. And all of a sudden he's gone round us and he's gone down the road. So we went past the place and we had to drive all the way round again. And in that, that moment, that five minutes it took us, because we had radios, we said a, a bolt, a bolt, a bolt. You know what I mean? That's all I heard. Let's get the fuck out of here. And I said, no, no, let's just carry on there. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do this. So you know, me and my pal was ex army. He was driving, we pulled up onto the curb, we pulled up, you know, it's about 40 foot from the curb to the to the front door. So we pulled onto the pavement, right up to the front door car pulled by the side of us and the dogs came out and uh, we knocked on the door you know, and just said like we believe uh, we've had information received that there's someone up on the roof and uh, we're going to come in and have a search the place and they opened the door and then we walked in now um, uh, we took the biggest the two biggest uh, guys around the corner and then I said look we, we, we have information that the, the guy that came through is dressed as one of you lot as a security guard so for my protection and my officer's protection, I'm going to have to cuff you until I find out who you are. So after a little bit, you know, I'm the head of security bollocks. Um, they went, all right, no problem. So we cuffed them up, <laughs> sat them on the stairs. And then what we did is when I walked back in, we, uh, we just took all the rest of them because they were was was was, was sitting behind the monitors, they monitoring the old gaff. And uh, we just took them out one by one, handcuffed them and done it. And we got a few uh, maintenance people. 
and a few cleaners. I think when I looked around, I think there was about 16 people on the, on the fucking stairway. Uh, um, and then we said, we're going to take the dog round and, and search the buildings. But, you know, just calm down. You know, it's not, no one's going to get hurt. You know, everything's going to be sweet. And then so we went to work. We, we had one guy on the, on the desk. Um, as I said, we actually went into the wrong room. We actually pulled a, a computer chip out, out which, set, which turned off all the, another security firm that was looking at it. And then they phoned up and uh, they said, what's going on? We said, there's been a surge in the system and it'll be up and running in another 45 minutes to an hour. And uh, that was that, they put the phone down and uh, we had an hour, we knew we had an hour then. So that b bought you more time? Do you know what? Yeah, you know, just by being caught, cool not not disappearing yeah. and answering the phone, it kept mm -hmm. it kept it kept the job alive. And this was estimated of being a five million pound heist. Mm -hmm. What was it? Motherboards? What is a motherboard? A motherboard is like it's like it's like a mainframe computer. So if you look at if you look at a, a server in a normal uh, office block, that one server can probably do the whole place. So if you imagine a server could probably do a whole country. So mm -hmm. you know these ones these ones are there like there were thirty two chips in each one. They're worth one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a piece, and they got about eight or ten in each server. So they can, you know, if you consider, in a phone you can send something to the, you can send a spaceship the yeah, same amount of technology. With the technology in, in the phone, yeah. So the technology in this, apparently, we we uh, we shut down three countries, um, which they weren't happy about. You know, I think it was Morgan, uh, yeah, Morgan, uh, the Morgan uh, Foundation or Stanley, whatever yeah. it is, the bank people. Um, yeah, we shut, you know, we shut down, uh, but we we spent an hour in there. We kept everyone reassured, you know, and then we just went in there, drilled it all off. We kept everyone nice and calm. Brought, you know, I think we had about, about 15 bags, you know, them big washing bags and stuff. And we just walked them out to the van, you know, and then uh, we, I called it and said, like, let's go. And so we took one of the dogs went out. Uh, everyone went out. And then I was the last one out of there. And I, and I looked at, I just, you know, I just shut up, shut the door up. And then and we got in the van and we were gone. Um, um, it took us about 40, 40 minutes to get to where we was. We went and dumped all the gear, put it all in, in the stash, got rid of the cars, burnt them out, burnt the vans out. And we met up about one o'clock in the morning. Uh, after we'd done everything, uh, we got rid of all our gear, put it all in bags so we can burn it. And uh, that's the first time we sat down and had a drink and just discussed it. You know, you know, you know there's a certain bit of camaraderie when you do a bit of work, whether it's counting out money or whether it's doing a job. Uh, but it's also a way to unwind. You have a laugh and a joke and you say, you know, you, you start talking about the job. And then within an hour, you've had a drink. Everyone's happy. We know we got the prize and we know we got away with it. The most important thing, we got away with it without earning anyone, which is great. You know, um, um, yeah, for me, that was, uh, you know, it was, it was a job I'll never forget because it was my birthday the next day.